Hello everyone. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, March 9, 2021. And uh, it is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, this is uh, the start of our program for virtual online ART training. Today, we are going to cover module two, advanced andrology technique. My name is Ashok. Agarwal. I am the director of the Andrology Center. I welcome you all to this program. We are very, very pleased uh, to have you join us. And let me begin by my introduction. Okay. So, um, I'm going to be your host for the next two and a half hours. Uh, so let us begin. Uh, this is a brief uh, uh, biography about myself and uh, without uh, taking too much time, I'm in charge of the Andrology uh, Center here at the Cleveland Clinic and have been there for, uh, for many years. I'm also the director of the American Center for Reproductive Medicine. I uh, staff in the Department of Urology. Uh, we are very proud as a group. Uh, our program is recognized as number one uh, in terms of uh, the number of publications, the quality of publication and the reach of our publications in the field of male infertility, andrology and human assisted reproduction. We have uh, a very large number of uh, medical textbooks uh, that have been published. And uh, we are very proud that very large number of uh, uh, clinicians, researchers, students uh, have uh, received training uh, in our program from more than 100 countries over the last several years. I want to declare that uh, the organizers and speakers uh, of this program have no conflict of interest. We have not contacted any companies or outside entities for sponsorship. The program that we offer is entirely made possible by support from our center. Webcasting is supported by David Reichling and David Wolfley from the Information Technology Division of the Cleveland Clinic. Thank you to both of them. Further, the course faculty have donated their time for this online training. The program coordinators have volunteered their time for this training course. The names, images, and description of certain products or instruments shown or discussed during our presentations are being used routinely in our Andrology Center. These items are not endorsed by the speakers. Now, let's talk about what we are going to be doing today. So, today we are uh, going to be teaching and training you in advanced andrology techniques and the techniques that we are going to cover we are going to start uh, by discussing what is advanced sperm function test then we are going to go to the most important uh, test which is currently uh, being employed is called sperm dna fragmentation test we'll also cover test for oxidative stress as oxidation reduction potential test. Then we are going to talk about the lab developed test for sperm DNA fragmentation and then cover the clinical relevance of sperm DNA fragmentation in human assisted reproduction. And lastly, there will be a talk by our clinician on the clinical interpretation of everything that we are going to be covering here. So these are uh, Again, the topics uh, uh, from uh, starting in a clockwise uh, manner, a laboratory evaluation, clinical relevance, evaluation of SDF, and lastly, clinical interpretation of laboratory test, uh, laboratory results that you will receive, and how to make sense of it. And this is uh, the program in a, um, uh, on the left side and our speakers for the day uh, here. Um, our speakers are Professor Ralph Henkel, Dr. Sejal Gupta, and Dr. Rinata, Dr. Rakesh Sharma, and Dr. Neil Parekh. So, today 
we are going to be talking about the advanced andrology techniques. On the left side of uh, the panel, you see the basic test, which uh, can be covered under the semen analysis and many of the ancillary tests that you heard last uh, uh, in the month of uh, January during uh, module one. Uh, so these are basic tests. And then we are talking about the advanced andrology test. And there are a variety of tests. Uh, this panel uh, has uh, just a, a small number of tests, uh, which we have illustrated here. And uh, many of them, or some of them, will be highlighted in today's uh, talk. So why we chose uh, the test for oxidative stress? And the reason is that uh, there is uh, such a large amount of information on the role of oxidative stress in male reproduction and male fertility. Right from the very beginning, from 1940 to current, there are thousands, almost uh, close to 1,200 publications, which is uh, probably the largest number of publications in one subject matter. So it is a very important area, and we felt that it is important for us to cover that. And also we, on the right side, you can see uh, we, have uh, a great deal of expertise in this uh, particular area uh, and we feel that we can do a very good job in talking about and explaining the, the practical side of uh, these tests uh, for male infertility. And then the sperm uh, DNA fragmentation, another important test. So if you look at the left uh, side, Again, this is a very hot area with very large number of publications, both original publication reviews and meta-analysis. And this data is only until 2019 and certainly the number has uh, increased since then. And on the right side, again, uh, we have uh, at the Cleveland Clinic uh, a great deal of expertise in this area, not only from a research point of view, but also from a clinical point of view. We have. Uh, developed techniques. We have uh, standardized those techniques for uh, sperm DNA fragmentation testing. And we felt that uh, we can share these uh, things uh, with a great deal of expertise and confidence. And setting the stage for uh, the follow-up lectures uh, that will be covered by the next speaker. So thank you again. And uh, we move on to the next. But before that, I want to tell you that we are in my office here uh, orchestrating this program and uh, the next speaker will come under uh, my name but uh, uh, and i move to another chair so if you see him he is uh, my associate here his name is dr rakesh sharma uh, rakesh is uh, an associate uh, professor uh, at the learner college of medicine of Case Western Reserve University. He is the coordinator and assistant technical supervisor of our Andrology Center. He has published a very large number of uh, articles and research uh, before uh, moving into the clinical area completely. And uh, he has received several awards and is well recognized uh, in the field of Andrology. So, um, Dr. Sharma or Rakesh is going to be, uh, please, next slide, is going to be uh, talking about uh, the laboratory evaluation of oxidative stress. So, I give this uh, now for Dr. Sharma to take it and start his presentation. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> The talk will be on laboratory evaluation of oxidative stress. The learning objectives are to understand oxidative stress and its role in male infertility, examine some of the direct and indirect tests of oxidative stress, review the current challenges with the current markers in measuring oxidative stress, Introduce a new marker of oxidative stress called the oxidation reduction potential or ORP. I will also highlight some of the lab scenarios that we encounter when we use this test. I will also review the quality control associated with this test and highlight some of the advantages and disadvantages of ORP. Male infertility 
can be attributed to a number of factors. They could be the lifestyle, alterations, genetic changes, hormonal causes, varicocele, systemic diseases. But in 50% of the cases, the underlying etiology is unknown and they present with abnormal semen parameters. In these patients, oxidative stress has been shown to be a major player. Oxidative stress can be caused because of a number of factors such as pollution, drugs, smoking, altered semen parameters, infections, presence of varicoceles, cancer, and they all lead to oxidative stress because of the presence of free radicals such as superoxide A9, hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals, and they cause an imbalance resulting in oxidative stress. And this oxidative stress causes the alterations in the proteins, the lipid peroxidation, apoptosis, DNA fragmentation, resulting in sperm damage and eventually resulting in male infertility. In this slide, I would like to explain to you the mechanism of oxidative stress associated with male infertility. The white blood cells are the main contributors of reactive oxygen species. They result in inflammation or infection, resulting in the release of cytokines and the generation of reactive oxygen species. The other source is the production of abnormal sperm during spermatogenesis, which contain the cytoplasmic droplet. And this cytoplasmic droplet results in altered uh, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, resulting in increased production of reactive oxygen species. Also, the apoptosis going on during spermatogenesis triggers the caspase activation process, resulting in abortive apoptosis. And they all contribute to the DNA damage, damage to the proteins and the lipids, altered sperm functions, eventually resulting in male infertility. Oxidative stress can be measured both by direct methods such as chemiluminescence, nitrobute tetrazoleum, cytochrome C, oxidation-induced fluorochrome probes, and also it can be measured by indirect tests such as the myelin peroxidase test, also known as the ENDS test, measuring the lipid peroxidation levels, measuring the chemokines, measuring the antioxidants as well as the total antioxidants, and also measuring the DNA fragmentation using these four commonly used methods. Each test has its own advantages and disadvantages. And for example, the reactive oxygen species measurement by chemiluminescence, it is a robust, highly sensitive and specific test. And luminol has the ability to measure both the global RS levels, but it also has the disadvantages that it is time consuming, requires large and expensive equipment, and similarly, the other tests also have their own advantages and disadvantages. In this slide, I would like to show you what are the commonly used current markers. And these are the reactive oxygen species, the total antioxidants, the lipid oxidation method, apoptotic markers, DNA fragmentation, as well as protein oxidation. However, all these markers have inherent challenges. And these challenges could be that these are individual markers. They capture only one dimension of oxidative stress. They do not provide a complete picture of oxidative stress. They reflect redox status at a given point. They are time consuming. Many of them are outdated, time sensitive, expensive, and they require special training. So we are looking for an ideal marker of oxidative stress. And what are the attributes? Some of the attributes that we're looking for is that it should be a single marker. It should provide us the real-time redox status. It should be simple to use. It should be a rapid test and allow us to measure the oxidative stress in both fresh as well as in frozen samples and should have the ability to measure and serve as a surrogate marker of semen parameters. And one such test is the oxidation reduction potential or the ORP test, which is used by using the male infertility oxidative stress system analyzer. And the principle is based 
that it can measure the overall balance between the total oxidants and the total reductants. It's a galvanostatic technology. And once the sample is loaded, it eventually reaches the reference electrode and the circuit is completed and the low voltage current is generated. This is the myoxys analyzer. And this is the sensor with the sample port where the sample is loaded and it reaches the reference cell, which then completes the circuit and we get the display of the voltage, which is a reflection of the level of oxidative stress. Here I would like to show you a quick video clip. This is the myoxys analyzer and this is the sensor. We remove the sensor, we mix the sample and we place 30 microliters on the loading chamber. And this sample then moves to the reference electrode completing the circuit and we will get the read for the ORP in about four minutes. So this gives us the reading of the ORP once the sample is placed in the sensor. As Professor Henkel mentioned during his lecture that ORP by itself is not very meaningful and it is important to normalize the ORP and this is accomplished by dividing the sperm concentration with the ORP and this gives us the adjusted ORP and the reference value of the adjusted ORP less than 1.34 millivolts per million sperm is the reference value and any values higher than this, they indicate the presence of oxidative stress in that given sample. We encounter different situations when we measure the ORP in any given setting. And today I would like to illustrate a few of these situations by giving you some scenarios. So scenario number one is that a semen sample has a volume of 1.5 ml and there is no sperm present in the wet prep, what will you do? The solution to this problem is that the ORP cannot be normalized because there are no sperm seen in the ejaculate. And therefore, we make a comment in the patient's report that the ORP cannot be measured because of lack of sperm in the sample. Scenario number two is that the sample is highly viscous. The semen volume is 1.2 ml and the analyzer displays error messages. What will you do? Highly viscous samples, they cannot complete the circuit between the sample and the reference port, and therefore the electrode connection is not made and we do not get any reading. So again, we make a note in the patient report that the ORP cannot be measured. And the other scenario is that a semen sample has a volume of 2.5 ml. The concentration is 110 million per ml. What will you do? Now in this situation, it is easy that we simply dilute the sample and we factor in the dilution factor into the normalization calculation and that will provide us the ORP value in that sample. Scenario number four is that the semen sample has a volume of 1.5 ml, concentration of 40 million per ml, and the analyzer gives an error message. What we will do in this situation? Well, the solution is that the circuit has not been completed. So we simply remove the sensor and reinsert it gently and the circuit will be completed and we will get the ORP reading. Scenario number five is that semen sample has a volume of 1.5 ml it is severely oligozoospermic with a concentration of 5 million. What will you do? Well, we measure the absolute ORP and we normalize it by dividing with the sperm concentration. In this situation, the ORP will be very high, indicating the presence of oxidative stress. Scenario number six is that semen volume has a volume of 1.5 ml concentration of 40 million per ml and the presence of white blood cells of 6 million per ml. What will you do in this situation? The solution is that we measure the ORP and we divide it by the sperm concentration. 
ANS test or the presence of white blood cell is not included in the calculation and therefore no further adjustment is necessary in this case. Quality control is very important in the measurement of this test and this can be accomplished by making use of the calibration verification key. This is the calibration verification key which simulates the presence of the actual sensor. It has two sides, side A and side B, which have different voltages. And side A has the range of 99 to 101 millivolts. And side B has the acceptance range of 295.8 to 304.2 millivolts. So when we insert the sensor with side A or side B, if the reading is in this range, then the quality control passes. This sheet provides the daily or the ORP when the test is done. And each time we measure the ORP for site A and site B, and they should fall in this range. And the technologist will then initial indicating that the quality control has passed. Another way to perform the quality control is the use of the low and high solution ORP. The low solution has a voltage of 33 to 70 millivolts, whereas the high solution has the voltage of 91 to 117 millivolts. So we place 30 microliters of each solution on the sensor and we read the voltage. The quality control sheet will have the lot number, the date that the sample quality control was performed, the high solution ORP and the range, and similarly the low solution range. And if it passes, the technologies performing the quality control will initial indicating that the ORP has passed the quality control. So the advantages of the ORP test are, it is a real time measure of redox status. It is simple, rapid, it can be measured in fresh and frozen sample as well as in seminal plasma. It also serves as a surrogate measure and measures all antioxidants present in a given sample. This slide shows the distribution of normal and abnormal semen parameters in patients and the cutoff of 1.34 that is used as a reference value. And you can clearly see that all normal samples are below the cutoff of 1.3 millivolts, whereas patient samples with abnormal semen parameters show higher ORP levels. In this slide, I would like to draw your attention to a study that was performed in our center with a sample size of 807 subjects in which the samples were distributed into two groups. Group one was those with normal semen parameters and group two were the patients with abnormal semen parameters. And as you can see from here, the RP in the first group with normal semen parameter was very low, which is 1.34 and all patient group with abnormal semen parameters had elevated levels of ORP, which were very significant. In another study done by the Hamad Medical Corporation, a sample size of 4,000 subjects were included, and these were divided into two groups. Group one were those with no normal zoospermic samples, and the other group were those with the non-normal zoospermic samples. And as you can see from here, the ORP levels were significantly higher and almost five-fold higher than those seen for the normal zoospermic group indicating that ORP is a good indicator to measure the semen parameters in the two groups. In another study by the same group, the samples were divided based on the sperm motility into normal sperm motility group and those with poor sperm motility or the asthenospermic group. And again, the distribution of ORP was significantly higher and 5.63 millivolts compared to the 1.79 millivolts in the normal sperm mobility group, again indicating that the ORP measure 
is different in the two groups of patients shown over here. In this slide, I would like to show the importance of oxidative stress measure using the ORP measure as a test for oxidative stress. Almost 46 million infertile men have some underlying cause of oxidative stress, which can be measured using the reactive oxygen species test. But there is another group, which is the idiopathic group comprising of almost 46.5 million patients. And these are the patients that have abnormal semen parameters with no known cause of infertility. In these patients, oxidative stress was found to be the underlying factor in 80% of the cases, which amounts to almost 37.2 million patients. And these patients would have not been diagnosed if we did not measure the oxidative stress using the ORP as a measure. Therefore, we categorize this group of idiopathic infertil infertility as the male oxidative stress infertility or a new group called the MOSI. And this gives the worldwide incidence of MOSI, which is a categorization of patients who otherwise are termed as idiopathic. So using the ORP as a test, these patients are actually the patients who will demonstrate high levels of oxidative stress, which then can be treated with antioxidants and managed. So to leave you with some take home message, oxidative stress is the underlying cause of male infertility. Current markers of oxidative stress are unsuitable to be used as a diagnostic test and ORP can distinguish both the infertile patients with normal and abnormal semen parameters, thereby serving as a surrogate marker of semen quality and high ORP is the indicator of MOSI, which then be treated using the antioxidants. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is another view of the Cleveland Clinic. Lastly, um, you can connect with our center uh, by sending a request, searching my name and Cleveland Clinic. And uh, the benefit of connecting is that we are providing daily updates on our research activities. Uh, we provide free access to hundreds of research articles published by our center, by our scientists and researchers and our collaborators. You can also read the latest research which have been presented at important national and international meetings, reproductive meetings and urological meetings. Learn about uh, virtual research opportunities that our center provides. Learn about our online ART training courses. And also, the opportunities to collaborate with a team of uh, ACRM researchers. So please uh, consider joining um, uh, on our LinkedIn.